There's one woman in my village that loves cooking in the night. Once it's 9 p.m., she will start cooking. She's into buying and selling and leaves very early in the morning to buy her goods, which comprises of vegetables, fruits, plantains, etc., etc. She goes from house to house to gather her goods, so by the time she will be done and head to the big market, it's already noon. Her coming back home is always at from 6 in the evening. Once she returns, she will have her rest and then eat before getting ready to prepare another food. Preparing the late night food helps her to leave early, knowing that there's food in the house for kids and her husband. Many have warned her to stop cooking late, but she wouldn't listen. The last time I warned her, I was returning from snail hunting with my cousins when we spotted her smoke and went to see her. It was already past 12 a.m. I warned her to stop cooking late or else she would receive unexpected visitors. Yet, she continued, I am not afraid of anything, she told me. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. Two nights ago, we heard some scream and heard footsteps running ra around midnight. We heard voices and got up from our bed. It was one of our cousins who went snail hunting with his friends that ran inside our compound to wake us up. The way they were laughing got us surprised until they began to narrate what was happening. It was already past midnight and we all headed to the woman's house. To see with our both eyes. Madame was shaking like a leaf and all her food on the ground. Her husband and kids were all seated quietly while some elderly men and women were thanking God that nothing happened to her. The instant I entered the compound, I became uneasy. My head grew bigger and goose pimples filled my body. Story have it that while she was busy cooking, a hand came out of nowhere and began taking her firewood one by one. She said she already saw her firewood flying in the air, but no hand or person was present. Five firewood with the fire still on left her fireplace and stayed in the air without moving. When she tried to run, she heard her name and saw five men holding the firewood, staring at her very angry before disappearing. She screamed out of shock, waking up everyone. I shook my head as I kept staring at her. She was already a mess. Her body was shaking so badly and some herbs were squeezed and given to her to drink so as to bring her back her spirit. Anytime she tries to speak, she talks like one who was about to lose it. At the far end of the compound, which had cassava farm in it, was the same five men staring at her, still holding the firewood. They held it up for some time before dropping it on the ground. This is a warning to her. The next time they visit, she might not survive it, said one of the elderly men. I continued to look at the five men to see if I re would recognize any one of them, but I wouldn't because I knew little of their family history and people who lived before the present ones. They stared back at me and I had to let them know that I saw them by walking close to the farm with my eyes fixed on them. They turned their back on me and disappeared all at once. Madam Midnight Food just laid on the floor saying some gibberish and one of the elders gave her a very painful slap on her back that got her screaming again before collapsing. She will be fine, but this time around she has learned her lesson. No more midnight food, said the elder. I have warned her, but she wouldn't listen. Our kitchen is outside and it will be attracting other creatures to her 
but she says she's not afraid of anything. I know that she's, what she's doing is helpful, but she wouldn't listen. Just few minutes, I left her to take my bath. Then I heard her scream, cried her husband. I kept quiet watching them. Definitely, she'll be fine, but no more midnight food. She indirectly invited the ancestors to feast and they came after several invites. They were not going to hurt her, but scare her due to they understood her ignorance. Take some three spirit cola nuts and alligator pepper to appease them by tomorrow. She will be fine, said a traditionalist amongst us. It was a laughable situation, but wasn't funny to me, despite my cousins making jokes about everything. She was the one who ignorantly invited them to a party, and they came. She was very, very lucky though. We left knowing fully well that she would be all right. Since that day, Madame had been indoors trying to pull herself together. Her husband told me she's okay. It was this afternoon I and my cousins were talking about her and how she was shaking. Then we began to make fun of her. I am going to visit her by tomorrow so as to laugh at her and remind her to continue cooking every midnight. Since she refused to listen, she has listened by fuzz. Most times, we ignorantly invite some wahala to ourselves. This is the end of the story. I hope you did enjoy it. If this is your first time of stumbling into my channel, you're highly welcome to Obiagali's story. I hope to see you in our next video upload. Please click on the subscribe button and turn on your bell button to get latest updates for my returning subscribers. A big thank you. Bye.